Okay, we play? We play, we play. We're going to uh, explore providence and the religion of no religion together. In order to do that, we need a couple of triangles. In order to do that, we're going to explore two words. And from there, we're going to go for the implications of it, and that will give us the idea of a religion of no religion. To uh, jump into one aspect of it first, by religion I mean from the religio, which is what the word is, means something that binds together. It's a saving belief that binds people together. It's a saving belief, a belief that is thought to save someone. It's a saving belief. And that saving belief binds people together. And therefore, they can then function together under that belief, and they have camaraderie, Unity, purpose. Now, there's another kind of word I want to look at. This is religion. And the other is a word I'm going to use, spirit or spirituality. Now, what I mean by spirituality, which is a curious word in our culture, is that which is achieved through some practice some kind of practice that brings about altered states of mind. Or, of course that's putting it negatively, let me put it negatively first, practice that brings about altered states of mind. Now you can have an altered state of mind in two ways. You can, you can gain something you didn't have before, and therefore by that addition, you've altered yourself or the mind. That's one model. The other is that there is an impediment, an impediment to our seeing. There's nothing nothing you have to reach for, you already have it. Therefore, the other model is a purifying or a cleansing. And with that cleansing, there is an altered state of mind simply because the obscuring beliefs are no longer functioning to cloud vision. In any case, however you look at it, a person therefore can be engaged in all kinds of philosophical and yogic practices that bring on altered states of mind individually. This is a group effort. This is individual. This is therefore the development of the mind or the spirit. It's always an individual enterprise. Therefore, you can develop this realm without in any way participating into a religion as understood in this way. So there are some people who can be religious and never touch on spirituality. There are some people who are religious who seek spirituality. Right? There are the four groups. Right? The purest, those who have belief and they think that's sufficient. Those who have a spirituality and they don't feel any need to combine with anyone else. Those are the two extremes. And between them are those two groups, which is really a mean. So that's the way we're going to use the terms this evening. Therefore, if there's going to be a religion of no religion, you can anticipate where we're going. That, that is, there may be a way in which these people can come together, but then they're not being bound by a belief, so it's not formally a religion in the sense that we just described it, but they're being bound together by a mutuality of religious, pardon me, of spiritual practices or philosophical practices or yogics. Therefore, that would be a religion of no religion. Now, 
Let's go over here with these two words, providence and fate, for a while. There are three things. Let's take the first, metaphysically, all right? There is something then that some people call God, which is a curious word. In the Greek, it's a demiurgos. The, a maker, that's what it means, a maker. A God that is a maker, a divine that is a maker. And as a consequence of reflecting on an idea in the mind of God or an idea in the mind of the demiurgos, that becomes a model. The demiurgos then can then generate or make a cosmos, a universe. Now, that means then we have a maker, something made, and some process or energy by which it was made or by which this was conducted. So it's an energy or a means by which what was made came into existence. Now, we can talk about the relationship between these three things, which we will in a few minutes, but that's a basic triad. Now, there's another triad. Luckily for us, we happen to have another triangle. Um, there is also an activity where there can be a provider, something provided, and obviously an energy or something by which that is affected. Now, there's also, in this curious world of ours, most often, they are things that are connected by something that's doing the connecting, a connector. And there equally must be an energy or power that brings that about. The same thing on all three levels. Now, notice what we, what we can do now with this schema. There's always a middle term. Now, by a middle term, we have two extremes, the maker and the made. These are extremes. The provider, the provided the connected, and the connector, the extremes. The middle term, the energy by which all of this is processed, that's the mean. That's the mean term. Now, let's go back to the first model we have. In a very clear way to talk about a creation such as we're doing in this first triangle, we can also say that the maker must have first in some way made, as it were,